Hey, Tucson Tuesday, and with horrifically ugly, super light pastel kind of pink, or not pink, but purple. No, yeah. Uh, I'd mention it in another video. I really don't like this color. It makes me feel like a teeny bopper or something like that. It, yeah. I've just been too lazy to uh, actually remove it here, and since I haven't left the house, I haven't really worried about it. <laughs> but, okay, yes, the uh, TS380 which, um, in contrast to this, uh, is very masculine. And, um, yeah, is, is this is definitely the knife that made my top list of, um, 2021 for, uh, Tucson. This thing is, uh, a damned incredible knife. Uh, let's see. It is, uh, designed by, hopefully I'm pronouncing this correctly, but... Polinkovich Roman, um, definitely one of, uh, Cyrillic heritage. Um, I don't necessarily know if he's, uh, Russian, Ukrainian, blah, 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 any of that sort of stuff. I can't find a whole lot of information on him at all, but, uh, that's kind of unfortunate. Uh, cause just like, uh, Jipo with, uh, who designed some, uh, a really fantastic fixed play for Tucson. I don't have much information to go on, uh, or if they have uh, some other designs or, or anything. But this thing is damned amazing. Uh, we got a three and a three point seven five millimeter blade stock thickness. So it's right around um, uh, what Tucson likes to uh, end up doing with those. Uh, pretty darn. Yeah, it's pretty similar for um, their. Uh, their tolerances around there. That's uh, all sorts of good. Uh, we can see the, uh, the lock bar uh, relief there is uh, pretty attractively done with uh, some, like five channels going on there. Uh, this is a flipper, but it also has the front sort of thing there. And kerchunk, open that up. And uh, first off, we see this is basically a, a sandblast and then tumbled. Um, kind of nice blade. Uh, a finish that I haven't really seen Tucson do a whole lot with. There's the uh, the maker's mark and the TS380, and of course it's in 14C 28 inch steel, like uh, the vast majority of their knives. But some of them are moving up back to uh, D2 because this stuff uh, can scratch pretty easily. And I got another video probably about that. If it hasn't come out yet, then uh, it probably will be in the uh, not so distant future. So, yes, three and a half inch blade directly from this little hump here down to the tip. Uh, this thing is just, I don't really know exactly how to describe it. I mean, uh, the blade shape on this looks pretty uh, boring. I, I do like the, um, the nice uh S kind of curve that's going on there, but uh, also we have a very, very nice sharpening choil there, so you don't really have to worry about um, yourself getting it all up into there and uh, creating a smile. Uh, and because of that, we basically have a, a saber grind. Uh, it is a drop point, but that drops very, very close out to the uh, the tip rather than um, drop points that you see from a lot of other companies. Or uh, designers that uh, start a drop generally, I don't know, about halfway back or so. That seems to be a little bit more the uh, the norm. But because of that, um, we have a, a nice robust blade out towards the tip. And then it will uh, slowly start to uh, uh, dissipate into that there. This thing has a really, really nice grind on it. Very thin behind the edge. Um, not the absolute thinnest thing in the known universe, but with a knife like this, with this size and, uh, all of that sort of stuff, um, you also do want uh, a little bit of a girth to back this up and this definitely has it. Uh, so for me, I have, uh, already disassembled this guy and, um, I did some anodization for the, uh, the titanium. I basically did like a, uh, very bronzy kind of look to the uh, the backspacer and the liners there and then just a little bit more gold up towards the front i didn't um on this one in particular 
try to do any uh, polishing or removing of um, the uh, the oxide layer before doing the uh, the anodization there, because I wanted to keep that uh, original kind of sheen that it has. Uh, this thing overall really does give me kind of a military surplus kind of uh, vibes to it, and I thought that that kind of helped out a little bit. Kind of matches some uh, ammo cans and whatnot. <laughs> uh, I certainly know my father had used an old ammo can as his lunchbox uh, for uh, many, many, many years back when he was a uh, a uh, heavy machinery uh, mechanic. Kind of wish that he'd uh, bestowed a little bit more of uh, that knowledge down to me before he died. But uh, you know, he was. Uh, all sorts of not interested in doing any kind of work related things outside of work. And Hey, I, I don't blame him for it either. So yeah. Um, so the pocket clip on this guy, really, really nice. Uh, it is slightly angled there, but does have a, a nice amount that you can, uh, a nice amount of material you can get in there and, uh, slides in very, very nice, really secure. Um, obviously we got a uh, nice, titanium liners uh the lock bar access you don't really have um an extra divot cut out of the front here but they are basically chamfered on both sides i generally don't have any kind of problem whatsoever um closing the darn thing in basically any way that uh, i really want to uh so there's that but uh, i do know some people who uh, do prefer a little bit more uh lock bar cut out than that um, in general though, if they can do this, uh, kind of chamfer thing, I do think it ends up being a little bit more comfortable if I can't feel, um, a, uh, a protruding, um, liner or scale or something like that on that side just makes it feel a little tiny bit more like a fixed blade to me. Uh, and that's probably also something why, uh, uh, some button locks and stuff like that are uh, becoming popular because they can uh, end up doing that one. Uh, I'm doing a cut test on this. This is a TS-303 and M390. So, yes, uh, as you can imagine, this thing isn't exactly the lightest thing uh, ever to grace my table. Uh, we got, like, just under 5.5 ounces, 5.46 or 155 grams. Uh, so yeah, that thing is, um, it's got a little bit of weight behind it, but, uh, that's perfectly fine with me. This is a full size knife and it's, uh, really designed to do some full size tasks. Uh, we have quite nice carbon fiber on both sides here and it's, uh, as you can see contoured. So we have a, a the flat in the middle here and then contoured on both sides. We have a little lanyard hole going through uh that it also goes through the um the uh backspacer there so it's not just uh, a hole on either side so it's going to be a little bit more um gentle for uh whatever kind of cord that you might put on there if uh lanyards are your thing but uh yeah it does a pretty darn good job with uh the flipping there but uh also really easy to uh spidey flick and because this um, is basically a subframe lock, um, you have no problem with the uh, the lock bar adding extra tension. So you can slow roll this thing all day long. Doesn't really get in the way. You don't have to worry about uh, that uh, detent ball getting forced into the blade and preventing that from happening. So that's absolutely fantastic. Uh, we got some nice jumping up there exactly where I would want this thing, especially if I am going to do any kind of a uh, piercing sort of thing with it really does feel nice and comfortable, uh, doing it that way. Uh, you can do the, the whole reverse hammer grip thing there. You have a nice rounded area there for the, uh, the back of your thumb. It's generally not what I try to use my knives for unless I really want to like bury this into a, a wood stump or something like that, or a trunk of a tree, uh, then that ends up working. But, uh, yeah, just a lot of things ended up coming together really, really nicely. Um, I'd already pointed it out, but I really do appreciate the, uh, the finger choil there. They didn't make it larger to make you think, oh, maybe this is, um, 
this is a finger choil for ants or anything like that, but still very ample and gets away from the, uh, even the gradual plunge grind there. So all sorts of great stuff going on there. Um, yes. Something that uh, I did find a little bit interesting with this is, uh, I, I guess it was um, his particular design for it, but uh, these screws um, that are holding on the um, the uh, the backspacer, these are T6, not T8. Um, and T8s are, you know, uh, Tucson's uh, go-to. So this was basically um, upon their uh, design request, essentially, I guess. Um, you know, it's, I would prefer to see T8 there, but um, it is what it is. Uh, I also do appreciate a lot having a uh, longer backspacer. This one in particular, you don't really have a snaggle tooth hanging out there that's going to bite you. So um, that's uh, all sorts of nice and safe. And uh, yeah, like I said, I do appreciate having uh, longer backspacers, but uh, I'm quite a bit used to them from like a Benchmade uh, 940 and um, well I guess the uh, the Manix 2 XLs are actually a little bit different uh, they have the uh, back barrels and but the front of it is all covered up I'm, I'm just a little bit more used to that in general and this does a pretty good job of uh, doing that for it being a uh, subframe lock I'll call it that just because it you know, has a carbon fiber there, but as you can see, those, uh, titanium liners, um, pretty much any, anywhere else, if that wasn't there, it would be considered a frame lock. So yes, um, something that I can say about the blade finish is, uh, it does have a little bit of, um, uh, effect on the action of the blade out of the box. And uh, I'm going to basically move the knife up to the uh, microphone here and kind of move it around so you can uh, hopefully hear what's going on here. But yeah, so if you could hear that, uh, hopefully that uh, comes through. Uh, there is a little bit of friction there and it is basically due to this uh, blade finish. Um, it will end up... Um, uh, wearing in over time and uh, stuff like that. So I don't really have any problems with that. And it still does a pretty good job of uh, falling shut just because it is a um, fairly robust uh, saber grind three and a half inch blade. So yes, that is uh, around everything that I could say about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. As far as the thickness of the handle, it's 0 0.62. So it is a bit thicker than that half inch, um, or yeah, 0 0.62 inches. So it is a little bit thicker than, um, I, I guess, uh, some of your, uh, more well-known things. Uh, you know, obviously your, uh, Spyderco PM2, that's around half inch. If not, it's 0 0.52, something like that. But it's obviously, it's also contoured, uh, quite nicely. So yeah, it is a very hand filling grip. I really do have to give it that. This uh, finger curl here that uh, also allows you to uh, butt up against the blade without it curving back and not creating any kind of pain. Uh, really super nice. Uh, just works out really, really great. But yeah, it is a little bit on the uh, thicker side. And uh, I'd already mentioned the weight of it being almost five and a half ounces. So this might not be something that you want to toss in a pair of basketball shorts during the summer. But, uh, you know, if you're actually out there and getting a whole lot of work done, then uh, this thing is absolutely fantastic for all of that. All right. So that leads me to uh, want to go ahead and uh, pop the hood on this bad boy and see what we got going on here. So here's the uh, T6s. I think the one in the back is actually a little bit captive by the uh, the pocket clip. So you can't really fully remove that until you open the knife up. I have put on some uh, Loctite on there. So that's why there's some uh, crustiness going on there. But uh, hey, it works out for uh, keeping everything nice and in line. 
All right, so we can pop that out there, and we can see we don't really have much in the way of uh, skeletonization going on on the inside. And uh, that does make sense, because uh, the carbon fiber scales on here are actually fairly thick, so they go in decently uh, deep in there. Um, something I will say um, is uh, the screw on there uh, goes directly into the, uh, the pocket clip there, so... Uh, in that particular case, there is something that could potentially happen where you're uh, ending up uh, stripping out uh, a screw or something like that. Uh, or Not the, the screw itself, but the threads in the um, titanium clip there. But I will say, um, having this kind of design on uh, quite a few Tucson's and um, even uh, the... TS-382 that I took a look at last week that had the screws go directly into the uh, the titanium backspacer. The, the, um, the, uh, what is it, 6ALV4? Or whatever the heck, uh, titanium that they end up using. Seems to hold up pretty well to those threads. Uh, there, it's obviously not a super, super fine thread count on there, so it does, uh, have a little bit of meat behind all of those um, uh, threads. So it does a pretty darn good job. And I can also vouch for that because this screw was way over tightened from the factory. Um, so it was actually pretty difficult to uh, originally get off. Um, and uh, that was something that actually uh, reminds me. Oh, I'd just gotten rid of it. Um, something that I hadn't really realized is that uh, over time and me doing, you know, maintenance and reviews and everything like that on uh, many, many knives is that uh, my T8 bit was actually quite rounded, which, uh, you know, I didn't really think about. Uh, obviously, I had picked up a whole bunch of extra T6 bits because they're much easier to round off, but... Uh, Yep, T8, it ended up happening. Uh, I picked up some more from uh, Weha. This is kind of one of the newer ones. But uh, once I ended up getting that, uh, I was uh, much more able to uh, open this guy up without uh, camming out. So, hooray for that. But I did also um, actually purchase a specific piece of equipment. Uh, that would have been a little bit more uh, ham-fisted, but probably the best way to go for it. And, uh, well, that would be this guy right here. This is an impact driver set. And, uh, yeah, this thing's kind of big and chunky. Uh, and uh, I got a different um, color size for it because I got specific uh, bits for it uh, that are uh, from uh, Torx 8, 10... 12, 20, blah, 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 whatever. Uh, but yeah, essentially you'll put the bit in there, uh, making sure that you have this thing set for the right thing. Uh, you could end up putting it in that uh, hole right there and smack the top of this with a hammer. <laughs> and uh, essentially it will move just a little bit. So it's, it's kind of like... Um, you know, like an electric uh, impact driver or something like that, but uh, much more uh, large and deliberate. And uh, it, it, it works fine, but I did find that uh, in general, once I did have a uh, nice sharp lobes on my particular uh, driver of choice that uh, I didn't actually need to uh, go that route. But if you do actually need to do something like that, like if something is really, really over-tightened, uh, that's not a bad way to go about it. That being said, I should probably uh, put that pocket clip back on. Well, actually, you know, there was a reason why I pulled this off, and that's, yeah, yeah. So we got uh, nice channels um, going on on the, that particular side of them, and that's uh, for both of them. So we do have a uh, fairly nice and substantial uh, chunk of carbon fiber there that's uh, taking weight out of there. This obviously isn't um, super crazy weight optimized, but I don't care. I like this darn thing. 
and that's not the side that I want that to go in anyway. But uh, yeah, we can see we got uh, a little bit of a pen here, and uh, yeah, we do have a uh, screw right here that actually goes into the carbon fiber on that side uh, just to kind of anchor it down a little bit because uh, this side obviously has the pocket clip there as well as that so it was just a little bit of an extra thing um, in general it's probably not all that uh, super strong or anything crazy like that but you know it's it, it is adding um, just a little bit there uh, as you know an extra little anchor point for the back side there to make sure that the uh, the carbon fiber is uh, a little bit more rigid if you're doing some um, some more intense operations with it shall we say but yes single row uh, ceramic bearings uh, as uh, most knives are from uh, Tucson except for um, some newer uh, night morning designs who are using um, multi-row ceramic bearings and uh, Hopefully that spreads a little bit more to uh, others there. But uh, yeah, you, you can see the uh, little bit going on here. We don't really have a uh, much of a uh, reverse detent ramp on this guy in particular. Uh, but it is uh, just a little tiny bit slanted in general in that uh, area. Because that's also uh, the uh, lockup area. So that kind of helped on there. And it does feel a bit like it but uh, not quite as smooth as a transition as some of them can be. Let's actually get the uh, bearings in there so that I don't uh, put this thing together wrong like I end up doing in way too many of my videos. <laughs> but yeah, we can see we have a very nice, robust um, internal blade pin, and it's fully enclosed in titanium rather than having the, uh, the front of it have a hole there so it ends up um, keeping the uh, the bearings a little bit cleaner than uh, some others do and uh, I absolutely appreciate that sentiment uh, let's see so from here I should probably uh, reattach the pocket clip I do my best not to cam out, but sometimes it just happens. Uh, but yeah, as long as you don't do it too often, then uh, you're probably good. But, uh, uh -oh. I didn't put that other screw in there first before I slapped the, uh, the pocket clip on. Let's see if uh, that will bite me in the ass. Nope. All right, cool. We good. All right. So tighten up the front, y'all. At least a little bit. And T6 for the back things, which still, I would prefer them to be T8s, personally. But, uh, yeah. Some people do uh, have their preferences for that sort of stuff. Uh, there are quite a few uh, West African um, designers. What is going on with uh, this? Uh, there are quite a few uh, West African designers that uh, actually really, really prefer T5s, and it's kind of their uh, their thing. Uh, which is, uh, I, I guess, from an aesthetic standpoint, I could probably kind of understand it a little bit. But uh, yeah, it's just a little weird. I didn't quite get the uh, the pivot uh, fully situated correctly. Hey, wait a minute. What have I done with that thing? I have... Somewhere around here, a specific uh, Tucson pivot tool that would probably help me out a bit in this situation. Mm -hmm. 
but I have done the uh, the fantastic thing of uh, putting it away in such a location that uh, I don't remember at the moment. So uh, darn. Uh, basically, I was going to grab it by this side, and I could uh, turn it a little bit. But instead, I will uh, I will do it the uh, you know the manual way. Not off by much, but it is. Whoops. <laughs> All right, let's try this from the beginning. <laughs> okay, making sure that wasn't uh, below there. end up working yes it did all right so yes this is the ts380 this is basically one of my favorite two sons at the moment uh like i think i've probably said uh in the past with this thing uh kind of to me feels like um like having just a, a brand new overbuilt a uh, pair of work boots where you just kind of feel indestructible. Uh, like you can tackle basically any task, especially out in, uh, in forests and stuff like that. Maybe you got the logger heels on there. It helps you uh, walk through the duff and all that sort of stuff. Just <clears throat> manly. Yeah. This uh, has a lot of that same kind of feeling. I just get this guy, open him up and feel like I can cut basically anything finish basically any kind of job like that that I can. Obviously, this is 14C 28N steel. It's not, you know, a lightsaber or anything like that, but it at least makes me feel invincible, and uh, that's pretty awesome because not a whole lot of things do that. So, yeah, I really do have to uh, commend uh, Polinkovich Roman for this uh, design here, and, uh, yeah. I like that you can also... Uh, you can spidey flick it, uh, obviously, like I was saying there. But some of them, I do. I do end up like using my uh, my index finger to uh, do that. I can actually catch that uh, before a uh, fingernail, so it won't um, jack up my already messed up nails more than uh, I have to. Something that I often do with uh, like my 940, uh, especially straight out of the pocket. Super nice to do that. So that's just kind of a uh, fun, different deployment method uh, that uh, you can use, especially if you do it correctly instead of uh, screw it up while you're uh, randomly talking. But uh, yes, this is a uh, very, very fantastic knife. Um, and actually kind of interesting because, well, I don't know. I think I bought probably one of the, uh, the first few that were available. And I also got this off of uh, Amazon rather than... Uh, um, winning some auctions uh, on eBay for it. And because of that, I paid about 115 bucks for it, which, um, I mean, if you can get it for less, then fantastic. Uh, I actually haven't seen them listed on eBay for a bit. And I'm not, I don't, I certainly hope that this wasn't a, a smaller run because it was a, a, a lesser known uh, designer or something like that. But uh yeah, I mean, if you can find one of these guys, it is uh, absolutely fantastic in the hand and uh, just takes care of work like you wouldn't believe. And I also do really appreciate um, the uh, the anno work that I did on there and just kind of helped add to that uh, whole uh, military surplus kind of aesthetic that I think that this uh, particular knife has. But wow, I've rambled and... Uh, well, mostly raved about this guy in particular. So, um, yeah, uh, sorry for it being a little bit longer than uh, some of my other videos. But um, I guess it was uh, kind of warranted since, um, you know, I I might um, 
might have kind of a uh, a lurid love affair that might be uh, ending up going on with this particular knife. <laughs> but alrighty, as always, uh, I appreciate y'all for watching, and have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo. Slopes nerd.